Hey everybody, Barry here again. Getting really excited. This is getting dangerously close to getting fired up. <sighs> like, like really, really, really close. Uh, what do I have to do? I gotta tighten up some of this stuff here. Put oil in it. Make sure nothing leaks. Um, plug in some wires. Haul the tune out of the Cadillac. Put on this one. And it's pretty much ready to fire up. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with this engine as I did to test the fuel injectors. I'll put a pump in a in a gas can or whatever, have it well away from the engine so there's no fire getting at it, no sparks, and run it directly to the fuel system. I get nervous. <clears throat> I get really, really nervous because this is my first time doing a lot of stuff here, like a lot of firsts. First time making my own oil pan. First time making my own pickup tube, which if done incorrectly, catastrophic failure, throw it all in garbage. Remote oil filter, assuming I have the hoses hooked up correctly. I went off a YouTube video for which one is the inlet and the outlet. So if I have those backwards, there's a check valve in the filter that will not allow oil through it. That means no oil in the engine anywhere. Bad time. So hopefully I have that done right. Uh, yeah, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff on my mind. Hopefully it all goes well. I'm, I'm sure it will. I'm, I'm, I'm not new to this necessarily. But, you know, there's always a chance of something happening and having to start all over again. But if I do, that's it. This is like the sixth one I've built. I blow them up with turbos. It's just part of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and put some oil in it. And uh, then go ahead and tighten this stuff up here because it's just on hand tight. i got to tighten up this one here so no oil sprays everywhere. Put the drain on it. And I'm also, before I start it up, I'm going to paint up this stuff here. I want this to look good when it's fired for the first time in the van because, you know, there's nothing worse than a rusty, dirty looking engine in a, in a thumbnail. Nobody wants to look at that. <laughs> it just looks like a garbage old junkyard engine in the, in the van. It looks like I didn't put any work into it. So I'm gonna clean it up real nice, paint it up, and this should be shining when I'm ready. For oil, I'm gonna go with Pennzoil 10W30, mainly because we've got shelves and shelves of oil that's been left over throughout the years. Every year or every couple of years, CarQuest changes uh, manufacturers where they buy their oil from. Right now is April Superflow. Before it could have been Penn's Oil, Mobile, whatever. So there's a lot of oil left here that we don't really sell because it might be a dollar more per quart and people just like cheap oil. So I usually try to buy some of the leftover stuff just to get it off the shelves. And that's basically my only reasoning for using whatever brand oil I choose. So Penn's Oil 10W30, it's good stuff. Part number is 5500023796. For anyone who's concerned, and uh, let's pour it in. I just kind of thought about it. It's probably weird that I name it a part number on everything that I use, but you know, if somebody is interested in using a, a certain thing that I use or whatever, it's nice to have a part number. And I've seen too many videos where the guy just uses his part, bolts it on, done, and I'm like, I'd like to buy that, but I don't know how, because I have no idea what it's called or the part number or whatever, so. But yeah, I just do it for that reason. Right now is one of these times that I wish I had the truck oil spout on this thing. <laughs> Wait, I have an idea. <laughs> My knees crack every time I bend down. Let's see if I can't pour this all over the floor. The best part about having a drain right here. Although when I get a rat on, I'll never be able to do this, but. Yeah, I'm gonna make a mess. Let's see. Oh, it still works. And I can just let it drain. This is what engineers should be doing.
I thought it might be easier to take it all apart to clean everything here and paint it. I took the harness off. The nice thing is they just come apart in one piece, so they click back right in place. I'm going to go ahead and probably clean it up a little bit more in a couple spots and tape over the top here and then paint them up. Well, it looks a whole lot better. Another coat of paint probably wouldn't hurt, but my can is empty. So I'm going to bolt them on just like they are. Get ready and bolt all this together and then install them on the van. Now i got to figure out how these tangle of wires go back onto these brackets. Well, they put them on upside down. I went ahead and bolted all the coils on. They look a whole lot better than rusty, nasty old coils. Now about the front end with coolant, the intercoolers, all that stuff, I am gonna bolt the rad on because I'd like to get it not up to temperature per se, but at least get it running for a few minutes. I don't wanna risk running it with no coolant in it and end up, you know, messing up valves or getting hot spots in the heads. I don't wanna no damage. I don't need any of that. This has been too much work for me to go mess it up because I didn't put coolant in it. So I will put a rad in it and I'm going to leave the intercooler for now. What I'm going to do is just tip this turbo up this way and run a hose directly into the intake. Just so I'll have the turbo hooked up. Obviously I'm not going to get it into boost or anything. Just rev it up brum, brum, a few times and shut it off and right back at it again. But I do want to put coolant in it so I'll put the rad in. One thing I do have to do is obviously put on my steam port thing here like that it just will not go in place come on ah there you go and what i'm going to do is run a hose from here and i'm going to drill and tap a fitting in the water pump just so it can go do like that just cross here i did it with the one on the rat rod worked perfect because the rat rod had um, a different rad in it that didn't have the fitting that i needed so the same thing with this one with the van one so that will work fine. It'll take all the air bubbles, throw them in the water pump, and throw it off into the radiator. It'll be fine. So I think I might go ahead and do that now, just so I'll have that out of the way. What I'm going to use for a fitting is this 18 NPT to, I think it's a quarter barb? Yeah, it's a quarter hose. It's basically the same size as this thing here. And that will allow me to just clamp a regular rubber hose on it. And hey, I do have my 18 NPT tap, which a... 7 millimeter 12 point socket smacks perfectly onto. I know you're not supposed to use a socket on taps because it can kind of make it sideways and stuff, but I don't care because I'm awful with a T-bar and there's no room for that here anyway. So quarter drive socket with an extension and a ratchet and you can just screw it in all day long, no issues. Now, of course, I did steps backwards again and I have to drill it now with the water pump on the engine and if you've been watching long enough, you'll know by now that usually I do steps three, four, five, and then one, two, and then go, oh no, I forgot something, or I should have done that earlier. Anyway, it's not a deal breaker or anything. Uh, I'm going to put some grease on each drill bit that I use to catch any metal shavings, and also I'll just run the blowgun over it, just to make sure there's nothing down in the water pump. A little small filing I'm not really concerned about, but uh, I don't want a big pile of it in there, so... I'll take my time, put some grease on it, trap the fitting, clean it up often, and we'll have this done in like 10 minutes. I was just about to drill a hole, but I got my drill out, red and snacky, and I was like, there's no coolant in this. Why don't I pull out the six bolts that hold the water pump on, do it on a bench, and have zero risk of getting metal in there? Okay, back to step one, two, three again, I think. Let's just pull the belt on. It'd be like five minutes. That was fast. Like five minutes fast. Best thing about these LS water pump gaskets here, well, the aluminum rubber ones, is they're reusable. They don't compress really very much at all. I've used 
the same gaskets on rat rod several times like five six times something like that and they don't leak so it's great i went ahead and made a mark on the back of the water pump instead of having it come straight up off top of the water pump like here and then going over and across and stuff i figured it was just easier to come out of the back of the water pump and it can just go across over to this one so i'm gonna go and drill some holes having it off will make it a lot easier for me to get all the filings out because i can blow it out through here or out through this top port here and even i guess some of it could come out through the heater core hoses here but i imagine it's all going to go that way anyway so let's get her all drilled out and see what happens. Now before I go ahead and glue this thing in i'm gonna lay it in place to make sure this is all good if i have to i'll put a pipe tap plug in there and uh, actually no i think it'll be fine looks good and it's out of the way enough that you won't be able to see it let's go ahead and blow it all out Well, that's all blown out. Now I can mix up some of my favorite stuff. I don't know why I like using this stuff so much, but I trust it a lot more than thread tape. And it's never actually let me down, so well, I'll just keep using it until it does. Well, I forgot to charge my phone, so I had it plugged in for a few minutes while I was at this. And I went ahead and put in my crossover tube. And put the hose up here. Down into the coolant crossover tube back there. And it'll work perfect. I'm down to a very short list of stuff to do. Wastegate, not a big deal. Put turbo on, also not a big deal. Uh, I do have to make like a 90 or something for the turbo outlet to go into the into the intake. So that's not serious. A couple of rubber boots and a bend, whatever. The main thing I have to do is change over my injector connectors again. Because I changed them over to the, I think they're called EV1 or EV6. They're, they're... I, I put connectors on for the LS1 injectors anyway, it's a short story. So I gotta change those back over to truck style injectors. And plug all the connectors in, get the harness put together, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna do all that before I put the rad on, because it's gonna be a lot easier to get out everything under here with this big chunky rad in the way. So I got a few minutes of messing with that. I'll set it up. You can see the snarl of wires I gotta deal with and uh, get some stuff plugged in. This is quite a tangle. The injectors are all cleaned up and switched over. I figured I wouldn't drone on cutting and splicing and soldering and heat shrink and cut, splice, solder. Heat. I figured I'd just skip all that, go ahead, get it done. And now I'm going to go and plug everything in because it is that time. It's getting really, really scary now. Like, really scary. Uh, but just keep pushing forward, I guess. Ignore the butterflies in the stomach. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna start plugging stuff in. And I don't think I'm gonna get it running in this video because that's another 20 minute or a half hour video. So I'm gonna get what I can done tonight and finish her up. And then next video, hopefully fire.
I got all the wiring plugged in and soon after I realized I've got a lot of work to do to make this harness look good. I mean, it doesn't look awful right there. There's a few sensors that are gonna come out anyway, like the upstream oxygen sensor wires, the old mass air wire, because I'm going speed density and I'm using a histogram on VCM scanner with the wideband to log air fuel ratio and tune it anyway, so I don't need upstream sensors because I'm not turning on long-term or short-term trims. After it's tuned, that's it, leaving the VE table to do the work. So I can get rid of a lot of junk up there. I hooked up a battery to ground positive right here. And right now I'm just gonna do a starter test just to make sure the engine rolls over, everything is all good. And I still got a lot of work to do before I can get it actually fired up, like put plug wires on it, which obviously is not a lot of work. Um, put the turbo on it. I'm not putting any exhaust to back of the turbo, just turbo itself. Uh, hook up the turbo oil feed line to turbo drain, put red in it, put some coolant in it, that kind of thing. So I got another couple hours work anyway. So I'm gonna leave that for the next video. So I'll set this one up probably to upload on Sunday. Hopefully the fire up is on Monday. I didn't mean to hype this up too much and leave it dragging out, but I don't think two or three days is too bad. Um, so let's go ahead and try the starter. I'm gonna try this in real time right now just to see what happens. And as you can see here, I do have a small oil leak. Now I checked around the perimeter of the pan, up around the flanges, everything is fine. But where it was leaking from was my drain plug right there. Wasn't on quite as tight as it could have been. So I put an extra quarter turn on it with the ratchet and it seems like it stopped. So uh, I can let my breath out again. So let's see if this thing makes any noise. Okay, all I gotta do is touch this on positive. Listen to that. Hey, it turns over and it turns over really, really clean. Like no clunks or knocks or anything, any telltales right away. I just wanna try it again, this sounds so cool. Turns over nice and fast. There's no dragging, no nothing. Ah, that gets the blood pumping. Anyway, I'm gonna finish it up here because I'm rotten. It's 10.30 or uh, closer to 11. And I gotta work at nine tomorrow. So time for me to go to bed. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a good night.